Hi, my name is Audrey Camp Curry, and I'm a proud board member of Prevent Child Abuse North Carolina. And I'm super excited to present to you today on oral health, specifically children's oral health. The Baby Oral Health Program originated from the University of North Carolina School of Dentistry's Department of Pediatric Dentistry. The Baby Oral Health Program serves two goals. One, to educate and provide resources for dental health providers on the principles of infant and toddler oral health and two, to better educate parents on the oral health of their infant and toddler. So why do baby teeth matter? You hear, oh, they're just baby teeth. They'll fall out, they'll get another set. Well, yes, they will get another set. The teeth that they have, a lot of those baby teeth will stay until the age of 12. The Center of Disease Control says that caries, dental caries, is the most common chronic infectious disease in children. One out of 10 kids will have cavities by the age of two. In its most severe form, dental caries can be associated with systemic problems. Kids miss school, parents have to miss work, all for this preventable disease. So why do baby teeth matter? Because they help with function, eating, talking. They also help with your face development, as well as aesthetics. As you can see in this picture of the human skull, the permanent teeth are developing underneath the primary teeth. So when the baby teeth get infected, they can affect the development of the permanent teeth. 40% of children will start kindergarten with cavities. Poor brushing and poor diet can lead to white spots. They can progress into cavities that need fillings. They can progress into cavities with abscesses if not taken care of. Here you can see this child has early childhood caries on the front teeth that have progressed into dental abscesses. Those little gumball bumps on the gums are filled with pus, and these teeth will need to be extracted. This child is in full braces. They have not been doing a good job on home care. Their brushing and flossing leaves a little to be desired. There's lots of plaque and food along the gum line. Fast forward to when the braces come off. They have all these white spots where the plaque and the bacteria have started to eat away the enamel of the teeth. This can progress into cavities that need to be filled, but their parent has spent all this money on braces, all this time going to the orthodontist every single month to get their teeth nice and pretty and straight, but now they have these defects that will be with them for life. These don't have to turn into cavities. Fluoride can help strengthen these white areas, but the white is going to be there. That will not go away unless something cosmetic is done to them. They could do whitening when they get older. They could do crowns or veneers. Crowns and veneers are very costly for something that could have been prevented. Quite often a patient will come into the office and say they were eating something like a baguette or some type of bread and their tooth broke. Well, there is something going on. Healthy teeth don't break just to break. In this picture, you see this tiny little hole, but it progresses. When we go in to clean out the cavity, it is a sinkhole of cavity. And this is what typically happens when someone's tooth breaks, is that the tooth structure has been undermined and the cavity is growing underneath that shell. And one simple thing like bread or salad or anything could break that thin layer of enamel that is covering this sinkhole of decay. Feeding practices is an important piece of the puzzle when talking about cavity prevention. Everything we eat and drink pretty much has a substrate of sugar um, that bacteria can eat except for water. The beverages that are listed on this slide are also very acidic in nature. Sodas do not have any benefit to children. There's nothing nutritional about them. There's no need for them to have them. Milk and juice are great for child development, but not so great for teeth. After the age of one, it's recommended that children have 12 to 24 ounces of milk and four to six ounces of juice. When we talk about snacking, think about time versus quantity. You dip a penny in acid quickly, rinse it off, it's gonna recover fine. Put a penny in acid and let it sit all day, it's going to break down over time. The same thing with your teeth. Having a concise breakfast with beverage included, give your teeth a break with some water. Have a morning snack, give your teeth some, a break with water. Have lunch, give your teeth a break with water. Have an afternoon snack, give your teeth a break with water, and then dinner. Then brush, floss, rinse, go to bed. 
Give your teeth time to heal, rest, and recover. Plaque forms every 12 hours on your teeth, whether you eat anything or not. Bacteria lives in that plaque. Every time you eat, the bacteria eats and they poop acid. Acid on healthy teeth makes small holes. All of those holes aren't cavities, but over time, they form together to make cavities. Brushing every morning and every night helps to reduce the plaque in the bacteria. Being mindful of eating and drinking habits helps for the bacteria not to have so much to feed on. And then incorporating fluoride in your toothpaste or rinse will be helpful to mineralize the small holes before they have an opportunity to form together to make big cavities. You want to start oral hygiene practices early. After the infant is done bottle feeding or breastfeeding, you want to take a wet washcloth and massage the gums. This will help the child to get used to you being there, but also to wipe off any sugar substrate that the milk or formula may have left. First teeth usually come in around six months. At that time, you can progress to a toothbrush with a little bit of fluoride toothpaste. It's called a smear, and I'll show you a picture of that in just a second. And teething will continue until 24 to 36 months of age when they should have all 20 of their baby teeth. As previously mentioned, fluoride is great for remineralization of teeth, but it also has been shown that primary and permanent teeth that are developed in the presence of fluoride are stronger. You can get fluoride in different ways, tap water, there are some bottled waters that have added fluoride, some well water has fluoride naturally occurring, um, as well as supplements, you need to talk to your dental provider or pediatrician regarding those. And now most of the time your pediatrician or dental provider will talk to you about adding fluoride at your preventative um, visits, your well child checks. If your child is under the age of three, you need a smear of toothpaste on your toothbrush, which is the picture on the left hand side, just a little bit. If your child swallows this, this is not gonna cause any harm. It will not upset their stomach. It won't cause any adverse reaction. If your child can spit, then you can up the size to a pea size amount, um, which is usually around the age of three, um, but each child is a little different, so I would work with them um, a little bit on that. If you have your child brush on their own, then I would recommend using a non-fluoridated toothpaste um, for them to brush on their own, and then for you to come back behind with the fluorinated toothpaste um, to make sure that the fluoride is covering the teeth and that's the last thing that's happening. Thumb sucking and pacifier use has been shown to reduce SIDS in children less than 12 months of age. I would recommend discouraging those habits after the age of three, so that way the dental deformity that has occurred from that habit has a chance to reverse itself before the bone becomes stronger and that deformity is more permanent. As children become more mobile, injury prevention is going to be important. Covering outlets with plugs, used outlets with furniture so the kids can't get to the plugs, car seats, nozzles for the bathtub when it's slippery and wet so they don't fall and hit the nozzle with their mouth, corners of tables as kids are starting to learn to walk and fall and tumble more often will all help prevent injury. It's important to know your family dental history. Are you missing teeth that should have formed but never did? Do you have extra teeth that you shouldn't have? These type of things can be passed on to your children. It's also important for you to go to the dentist. Research has shown that moms and dads who go to the dentist are more likely to bring their children to the dentist and the family is less likely to have dental disease. It also should be noted that dental bacteria can be passed on from caregiver to child. Teeth typically come in pairs and typically start around six months of age all the way to 24 to 36 months of age. While the child is teething, make sure your teething toys are safe. There's no external paint. They're all in one piece. They should not be able to fit through a roll of toilet paper. While your child is teething, they're going to be a little irritable and cranky. Giving them pain reliever will be helpful based on the child's age, Motrin or Tylenol. You just want to check with your pediatrician on which one they advise you to give. Pediatric medical and dental providers recommend that a child see a dentist by the age of one. When you and your child come in to see the dentist, most likely you'll have a knee-to-knee -knee exam, which means the the caregiver's knee and the provider's knees are touching and the child is laying in the parent's lap, laying back into the provider's lap. 
So that way the child is still with the parent. There is no separation anxiety. The parent can assist the provider by holding their hands to get a more thorough exam done. The provider will brush their teeth, look and make sure they don't have any dental cavities, and then paint a fluoride varnish on top of the teeth. Our goal is for kids to have healthy, strong teeth so they can focus on school, family, friends, and fun. Thank you so much for your time today. I appreciate it. I hope you learned something new. I will be live in a few minutes to help answer any questions you may have.